All right, everybody. So let's go ahead and uh, lie down on our backs and get started today in uh, either Shavasana or Supta Baddha Konasana. And, and let's just uh, close the eyes here in the beginning just for a moment so we can shift gears. As most of us, this will be a downshift away from activity, away from thoughts. So let's take three breaths together just to get started. Let's take a big, huge inhale through your nose. Hold your breath. And then open your mouth. Release. Good. Now we'll emphasize the sound ah on the next two. Take a huge inhale through your nose again. And then let it go. Ha. Good. And on the final one, try to ride the entire exhale out with sound. So take a huge inhale through your nose. Hold it in. And then the whole exhale, let it go. Good. And then seal your lips. Start to breathe in and out of your nose. Just find a rhythm to your breath. Okay. Ujjayi breath, breath, if you'd like to turn the volume of your breath up a notch or two. Just start to siphon the air over the backside of your throat. But let's go ahead and uh, get to it since we have a little shorter class today. Reach your arms behind you. And press your palms into the sides of that block. So you can have that block the widest way it could be. Good. And then squeeze your legs together. So legs are straight out, legs are squeezing in. Yeah. So make your arms really active. So you're not just holding the block, you're actually pushing as if you're trying to compress it into a smaller size. And go ahead and lift your block up about a foot. There you go. And lift your feet up about a foot. It's okay to bend the knees if you want to bend the knees. And then lift your head a little bit off the ground. Good. And try to keep breathing deeply, although it's difficult while you're contracting. Lift your legs a little higher. Lift your arms a little higher. Nice. And then lift everything up as high as you can lift. Legs up, arms up, really nice and high. Good. Let's do that a few times. So inhale, reach your legs in front of you. Lower the, the block down towards the floor. And then exhale, lift your legs and reach the block straight up. Two. Inhale again, forward and back. Exhale, three. We're just going to do ten, warming up. Inhale. Good. Exhale, four. Inhale. Very nice. Exhale, five. Inhale. Exhale, six. Inhale. Seven. Inhale. Eight. Good. Inhale. Try not to get sloppy. It's okay to bend the knees. Nine. Last one. Inhale. Let's hold the last one. So reach everything up as high as you can reach it for five, four, maybe a little higher at three. Almost like you're trying to touch your toes. Two, one, and relax. Nice job, you guys. You're going to uh, leave that block where it is. Bend your knees, roll over to your right side. And let's press up and come onto the hands and the knees. So we'll come into a tabletop pose. Make sure the hands are right underneath your shoulders. And the hips are right on tops of your knees. Good, and it's kind of a traditional cat-cow here. So inhale, lift your chest, pull your heart forward, arch your spine. And on your exhale, you're going to round your upper back by looking towards your knees and tucking your tail. Yeah, just like that, forward and back. Inhale, arch again. And then exhale, round your back, navel up and in. And inhale again, open up. Heart pulls through the gates of your shoulders. Exhale, round, navel contracts. Twice more, inhale, start to move as you breathe. And then exhale, round your spine once more. And this time, as you look forward and arch your spine, go ahead and tuck your toes underneath. Downward facing dog. Lift your hips up and back. And go ahead and pedal it out a little bit. So in the beginning, I want you to move a little more organically, I guess you could say, or how you feel like you should move. So where does the tension carry in your body? Just know that, you know, without the breath, the tension, it doesn't move very quickly. So let the breath be the conduit which kind of helps alleviate any stress or pain or whatever is kind of ingested in your body today. And we'll come back here in a little while. So walk your hands back to your feet so you're at the back of your mat in a forward fold. And you can catch your elbows here and just hang out, let your head relax. But again, kind of view it like cat-cow in a sense where you could just move a little more left and right, forward and back. And I'm feeling the body mechanics. As we start to marry the breath with calisthenic, making it more of a yogic practice, so more of a, a mind practice. And 
And so if you have your elbows in your hands, go ahead and change the cross of your arms so the opposite arm shifts in front. Subtle switch. And then let your arms fall. Let them hang. Bring the hands to your shin bones. Straighten your arms and pull your heart forward. So Ardha Uttanasana, you're lengthening your spine and you're feeling your feet press down and in. Good. Go to place the hands up on your hips and then stand all the way up. Step your left foot in front of you and turn to the right. Just going to face the right. Open your arms to the sides. And go ahead and look, uh, look at your feet. Look over your right hand first and just try to get that right foot right underneath your right wrist. You might need to go a little wider. Once you've done that, check your other hand. Check your other foot. A little wider than maybe you're used to. And then the feet are not turned out. They're pointing straight ahead. And then go ahead and close your eyes as you stand in what I call star pose. See if you can push the feet down. And what I mean by that is if you were on a slip and slide, your feet would slide together instead of out. And then let your chest broaden. Your upper back, your traps get nice and long. And then as I'm describing the posture that you're in, you're just breathing into it. And feeling the diaphragm expand at the base of your belly. And in a sense, kind of blocking out that you're you know, in a position and that your body's still. Good. Now reach your arms up and open your eyes. Have your palms facing in. And imagine you had a block over your head. Try to get your pinky fingers a little more in than your thumbs. So you should feel your chest muscle, your pectoral major, squeeze a bit. Some of you are pretty flexible. You could reach your arms back like you're pulling that block behind your ears. Nice. And then go ahead and reopen your arms, palms face down. Go ahead and flex your wrists. So I want you to point the toes back to your face, kind of like a dorsiflexion if I was talking about your foot. And try to keep your hands flexed like that. Look over your right hand and spin your right toes out to the back of the room and bend your right knee. Good. So you're in a warrior two, but your palms are pushing the walls away from you. Pretty soon you're going to start to feel a little throbbing in your arms just from the weight, from gravity. And see if you can breathe through that. And stay interested in the posture, less interested in movement. And a few of you might want to bend your right knee a little bit more just to challenge the posture. And if you have to relax your arms, by all means necessary, let them relax for a second. Come back to it when you need to. Good. Give me one more inhale. Sink a little deeper. And then straighten your right leg and pivot your right foot in. Look forward. Reach your arms up. Have your palms face in again. And as you energetically reach your arms up so you can soften your tail down. Don't worry. We get to do it again. Open your arms to the sides. Flex your wrists. Palms push out. And look over your left hand. Spin your left toes out and bend your left knee. Good. So the more muscle you have in your arms, the more difficult this is actually because weight of muscle weighs more than anything else. Let's see if you can let your breath stay the same. And make sure you're working your right arm just as much as your left. The last few breaths. And take a little bit deeper. One more breath. And then straighten the leg. Pivot the foot in. Reach your arms up. Nice. Place the hands on your hips. Point your elbows back. You can lift your chest a bit. It should feel nice. And then lean forward on your exhale. Go ahead and drop your hands down to the floor. And if you'd like to, you can walk the hands underneath you for a few breaths. And ideally, keeping the feet and the legs still active, still driving them into the ground. 
Good. Let's go ahead and walk the hands over to the right ankle. Give the right leg a little love, a little stretch, a little attention. And then switch. So crawling over to your left ankle. And focusing on the transitions in the practice can be very helpful as well. So the idea is just to pay attention, really not so much to me as it is to you. Good. And then come back to center. So on the finger tops, place the hands back on your hips. And we'll just stand up again. Good. And then reopen your arms. We're going to move on from that. Flex your wrist. Turn the palms out. Push the palms out. Look over your right hand and spin your right toes out. Face the back. This time, I want you to keep your legs straight. Just go into the first part of triangle. So you're going to reach as far as you can to the back of the room. But meanwhile, you're still pushing the other hand back. Good. If, obviously, if you feel a little more flexible, you lean a little further out. Try not to go down. Just go out. This should be a little frustrating. Good. Now, as you come back to center, just turn your right palm to face up and reach it up. Keep your left palm pushing back and reach up and back. So you might even catch a glimpse of your neighbor. It's like a 90 degree angle they have in their arms and start to make it more of an acute angle. So you're reaching further and further back with your right hand, almost like you're trying to touch your left hand, but not really. And last couple of breaths. Good, now come back to neutral, reach both arms up, pivot your right foot into parallel your feet and squeeze your arms nice and straight. And then reopen your arms. Make your palms, push your palms out, look over your left hand, spin your left toes out. And just the first part of triangle as you push your left palm as far as you can to the front of the room. Good. And if you're not feeling this in your arms yet, then you're made of steel. Okay, good. So you feel the inner part of your left foot heavy, the outer back foot heavy. So try not to rush. So come back to center. Keep your right arm like it is. Turn your left palm up. Reach your left arm up and back and push the wall behind you away from you. Nice. And as you feel the subtle little action of your right hip moving to your left, that might help a deep and deeper stretch happen as well. Nice. Good. Sometimes straightening the elbow can be difficult. Nice. All right. Now come back to center. Reach both arms up, palms face in, pivot your left foot in, swing the hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. This time lift your chest, maybe lift your chin, and then bow forward and fold on your exhale. And notice how liberating that feels. Hmm. It might be a nice time to turn the head side to side. Just kind of checking out where the travel, the tension travels in your cervical spine. And then I'm going to switch the opposite pinky on top, just to have a subtle difference. All right, set the hands down. Heel toe your feet a little closer together. And then place the hands back on your hips. And let's stand all the way up. All right, step up to the front of your yoga mat. And you can have the feet together if you want. You can separate the feet a little bit if you prefer. Just make sure they're parallel. Hands together in front of your heart. Bow your chin, but lift your chest. And maybe close the eyes and get more specific on your practice. What are you practicing? Besides the postures and the breathing, anything that you'd like to bring into it. Good. And whatever's on your mind, big sound of awe. Inhale through the nose. Ah. Good. Reach your arms up. Take an inhale. And fold forward on your exhale. And step your left foot to the back of your mat. Set your left knee down. You might want to slide the knee back a little bit. Catch the hands behind your back and interlace your fingers. And lift your chest. And as you lift your chest, keep your right leg very active. 
Just kind of feel the hamstring of your right leg curl a bit. And lift your chin enough to where you feel your throat stretch. But don't try not to throw your head back. Good. And just one more breath, leaning back. And then lean forward and set your hands down. You're going to curl the back toes underneath, lift your back knee up. And then grab your block, reach it out in front of you with your palms on the block. And if that's a lot, you can have that block on the ground. No big deal. Notice it takes a lot of strength in your back leg to keep your lower back safe. Come all the way up, crescent pose. Reach your block over your head. I like to bend my back knee a little bit more than most of you are doing now. But I'm going to leave that up to you. Good. And although the blocks aren't too heavy, so use the elbows and try to get them really straight. And then just take one more big inhale here. And as you exhale, release your block to the floor in front of you and shift it onto its highest height and lift your back leg up. That's it. Now working with your hips nice and level, I want you to bring your left foot next to your right, but don't set it down. See if you can keep the left leg very straight. And so you're pushing down with your right foot. Do that again. Inhale, lift your left leg back. Hips are level. And then swing your left leg next to your right. So they're level, but it's not on the ground. Twice more. Inhale, lift your leg. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, lift it up and hold it. And just hang here for five breaths. If you want a little more, lift your hands off your block and bring the hands to your heart. Four. You just find a steadiness in what you do. Three. Good. Two. And then everybody hands on the block. Last one. And then set your left foot next to your right. Hands to the ground. Step your right foot to the back of your mat. Set your right knee down. And then catch the hands behind you again. Interlace your fingers. And lift your chest. And that's going to open the front body. Only from the navel, through your chest, your neck a bit as you look up. Good. One more breath, leaning back. And then lean forward on your exhale. Drop your hands down to the floor. Curl the right toes underneath. Lift your right knee up. Grab your block. Take it the wide way into your palms. Squeeze your palms into the block. Yes. So ideally, you want to put it behind your fingertips. Use the heel of your hand more. Good. And then gracefully press all the way up crescent pose. Block goes straight up over your head. Yes. And if you need to bend that back knee, bend the back knee. And go up, up, up with the block. Good. Yeah. And then last inhale, you might lean back a little bit. And then set your block on the floor in front of you. Shift it to its highest height. All right. Lift your back leg up. So you're just in this, we call it a standing split. It's more like a letter L, especially since we're not completely warm. So keep your hands on the block, but lower your right foot next to your left. Try to get your heels in a line, but your right foot stays hovering off the ground. Do that again. Lift your right leg back as you inhale. And then lower your right foot next to your left without setting it down. Good. Twice more. Right leg lifts back. And then swing it down next to your left. And we'll just keep it back there this time for five. So lift your right leg back. You're just pulling your heart forward. It's a modified warrior three. You can bring the hands to your heart if you want a little more stimulation. Good. Three. Uh, that's it. Two. And then with the hands on the ground or the block, last one. And then set your right foot next to your left. Plank position. Step your feet back one at a time. Plant your palms at the front of your mat. Feet are at the back of your mat. Hips distance. Especially for beginners, you should look at your hands and try to open the fingers with the index finger pointing straight ahead or maybe even turned out a little bit. Good. Do it from your legs. Make your legs a little stronger. And then lower your forearms down to the ground one by one. Yes. Grab that block. Place it in between your palms. Kind of like a karate chop hand. So you're going to have the thumb pointing up and the pinky pointing down. Good. And then take a few breaths. You know, we're not going to hold this that long. It's temporary. It's necessary. All right. Go ahead and drop your hips and knees. Keep your arms like they are. You're just in a sphinx pose. But you're going to slide this block out in front of you. And you're going to keep your head lifted off the ground. Try to push your pinky fingers down and your elbows up. 
and then lift both of your feet just a little bit off the ground. Good. Now, if you start to feel a little more flexible, you can slide this block a little closer to you, lifting your head a little bit higher. Notice there's a limit. Not necessarily the higher, the better. And then just take three breaths. And one more inhale. And then child's pose. Push the hips onto your heel. Soften your forehead down onto your mat. And just take about three deep breaths to connect. And it's the name of the game, connecting with your breath, your movements. All right, let's go ahead and rock up to the hands and the knees, tabletop pose. Reach your left leg straight back and reach your right arm forward. And imagine your right palm was pushing into the side of a block. So the biceps getting a little closer to your ear, triceps rolling under. Good. Bend your left knee, reach back with your right hand, and try to catch the top of your foot if you can. And then kick the foot into your hand, let your right chest open nice and wide. Good. I like to look to the right. You can look straight down here as well. Good. Another front body opener. Good. Now, as soon as you release, tense your core, reach your right arm forward, left leg back. Take one more inhale. And then set everything down as you exhale, cat cow. Three times, look forward, arch your spine, stick your butt out. And then exhale, round your back and tuck your tail. Again, inhale, move the energy as you look forward. And then exhale, round your spine and look down. Good, once more, inhale, look forward, arch your spine. Go ahead and curl the toes underneath, downward facing dog on your exhale. And then bring your feet together, this down dog, pushing your hips back. Good. See if you can lift your right foot just an inch off the ground, kind of like what we did earlier. So can you keep your heels in line? It's difficult, but just try. Good. And then in a straight line, lift your right leg back and keep your hips level. Nice. Do that two more times. Swing your right foot next to your left. Heels are in a line. Lift your right leg back as you inhale. And then one more time, lower it next to your left. And then lift your right leg back. Keep it back there. Good. Round the spine, knee to nose, right? As you start to shift forward, pull the knee to your nose. And then step next to your right thumb tip and spin your back heel flat. Warrior one, reach your arm straight up above. Good. You can use the block here, but just imagine it's there for a moment. And then swing the hands behind you, interlace your fingers. Let's open the chest, take an inhale, and start to bow forward on your exhale. Try to get as long as you can first before you go down. Yeah, but at some point, let the head go. Let your jaw go. Let your expectations go. And after all, that's what it's all about. Good. All right, use your strong back leg. Let's come all the way back up to warrior one just for one breath. Maybe look up at the end and press your palm. And in plank position, hands to the ground. Step your right foot back. Take a few breaths to set it up. Good. Now, if you feel like you have a lot of energy for these few breaths, you can do a few push-ups, a few chaturangas, you know, feel, feel free to do that. Good. And then let's go ahead and place the forearms down one last time. Use that block one last time between your palms. Press the sides of your hands into that block. You know, they say if you're only going to do one exercise a day for the rest of your life, this would be the one. So Activating more parts of your body than other poses. Good. So we're going to keep those hands like they are. Just let your knees and your hips come down. Sphinx pose. Point your toes back. You're in a sweet back bend. And this time a little different. Slide the block out in front of you, but release your head down to the ground. Keep your hands pushing into the block. Eventually, you're going to lift that block off the ground. Right, lift your feet first. See if you can lift your knees. And then lift your head a little bit. And lastly, you can lift that block. All right. So you want to look straight down. That way, maybe you can lift the block in line with your ears for three. It's difficult. Good. Last two. You're not straining. Last one here. And then let it go. Release everything down. One more child's pose. Push the hips under your heels. Soften your forehead down to your mat. Find that bit of curiosity that a child has. An inquisitive nature. And let's move on. So now with the momentum, let's come back to the hands and the knees, tabletop pose. This time we'll lift our right leg straight back, reach the left arm forward into a handshake position. And you can just imagine you're pushing your left hand into the side of a block. 
Good. And then catch your right foot by reaching back with your left hand. If you can't catch it, no big deal. You know, we just, we just work with what we have, you know. You may never catch the foot, and maybe you catch it tomorrow. The unattachment to that is what we're looking for. Good. And take a moment to re-extend left arm forward, right leg back as you breathe in. And then set everything down as you breathe out. Cat cow three more times. Look forward, arch your spine. Exhale, round your back and tuck your tail. Good. Inhale, find the flow, the rhythm with your breath. And then exhale, round your spine. And last time, inhale, look forward, tuck the toes underneath. Downward facing dog, lift your hips up and back. Go ahead and bring your feet a little closer together. They can touch. And lift your left foot just an inch off the ground, maybe less. Nice, you guys. And we're just going to keep that left leg in a line. Reach it straight back. Good. Now lower your left foot next to your right. Try not to set it down. You're really flexing the ankle. Twice more. Inhale, lift your left leg back. And then lower your left foot next to your right. Good. One more time. Lift your left leg back. Feel that full extension of your inner thigh. And then bend the left knee, round your spine, knee to nose, shift forward. Good. Step by your left thumb tip, ground your right heel flat on the ground, and reach your arms straight up above warrior one. Good. And once you're here, swing the hands behind you, catch your fingers, take an inhale, lift your chest and chin, and then start to lean forward. You're going to bow into humble warrior again. It takes a bit of humility, patience. Right. We take a little bow to all the yogis who showed up today and all the yogis who paved our way. Then use your back leg. Come all the way back up, warrior one. Just one breath. Maybe look up, press your palms. And then hands to the ground, plank position. We'll start to flow a little bit. So in your plank position, take a big juicy inhale, top of plank. Lower halfway to the ground as you exhale or all the way to the floor for cobra. Upward facing dog as you inhale. If you know it, you're ready and you're warm. And then back to downward facing dog on your exhale. Take about three deep, full resonant breaths. And a little bit of space between each breath, whether it's just a second, a fraction of a second. Good. And then on this one, start to lift your heels really high. As you inhale, bend the knees and look forward. On the exhale, step float or lightly fly your feet to the top of your mat. Good. Flat back on your inhale. Fold forward on your exhale. Bend the knees, come into your first chair pose. Sink the hips down and reach your arms up. Good. And then can you just lift your, let's say, lift your left heel off the ground. And if that's easy for you, you could lift the left foot just an inch off the ground. Good. And then switch. Left foot's down. Just lift your right heel off the ground. If you want a little more intensity, go ahead. Try lifting your whole right foot. Left hip has to work a lot pulling back. Good. And then as you set your right foot down, stand up, bring the hands to your heart. Good. Right back to chair pose just for one breath. We're going to start to move with our breath. Fold forward on your exhale, fingers to the ground. Flat back, inhale, look forward, lengthen your spine, and then step back to plank or lightly jump back and lower slowly down, blending body, breath, and mind. And as you inhale, open up the heart to see what you can find. Sit downward facing dog on your exhale. Good. Go ahead and lift your right leg back as you inhale. And then step back into warrior one. Step by your right thumb. Spin your back foot flat. Reach all the way up. Good. Take your time with it. Swing the hands behind your back. You might go faster or slower than me. As you interlace, lift your chest, lift your chin. And then fold forward on your exhale. Humble warrior. And then on your inhale, come all the way back up to warrior one. One breath. And then hands to the ground. Back to plank. Start to lower slowly and sweetly. Good. Cobra upward facing. Open the heart freely. Downward facing dog. Let's just keep moving. Okay. So lift your left leg back as you breathe in. Step your left foot by your left thumb as you breathe out. Back foot's flat. Reach all the way up as you inhale, warrior one. Nice. And then swing the hands behind you on your exhale. Good. Inhale, open up. Just feel something sweet. Bow on your exhale. Good. Come back on your inhale, but try not to rush. And then plank through the vinyasa on your exhale. Lower down with strength. Good. Cobra upward facing. Include rhythm. Include length. And once you get back to downward facing dog, take about three or four nice, deep, resonant breaths. Yeah, just oscillating between inhale and exhale. Between strength and surrender. Stillness and movement. We're going to do one more round of this, and then we'll move on. So lift your heels. 
right? As you inhale, bend your knees and look forward. And as you exhale, walk, step, or spring to the front of your mat. Flat back inhale, here we go. Fold in, exhale for two chairs in a row. Bend the knees, sink down, reach up. And then stand up in between, hands to your heart. Right back to chair pose, repeating what we just did. Fold forward on your exhale. Flat back inhale, we call this warming up. Step or jump your feet back and lower slow without rushing. And then cobra upward facing, spread your clavicle. Downward facing dog on your exhale. Right leg lifts on your inhale. Step your right foot through on your exhale. Back heel flat, reach all the way up as you inhale. Catch the hands behind you on your exhale. And give it the inhale to open the front. And then bow on your exhale as you dip and dive. And then all the way back to the top with strength in your back leg, arms overhead. And then through plank, lower slow, nice and steady when you're ready. Good. Cobra upward facing, catch your breath. Downward facing dog, last side to go. Lift your left leg back on your inhale, feel the flow. Step by your left thumb on your exhale, back foot flat. Here we go. Reach your arms up, big inhale. Hands behind you on your exhale. Inhale, lift your chest. And bow on your exhale, just do your best. Good. Inhale, spring back up, but don't rush. And then hands to the ground, lower slow, elbows in tight. Yeah, that's it. Cobra or up dog, whichever feels most right. And then we'll meet in either down dog or child's pose for five breaths. You're welcome to take forearm plank, especially if you need a little more activity, a little more in intense muscular contraction. But wherever you are, it's all about your breath. Good. All right, so let's move on back to downward facing dog. We have a lot of momentum. Before you know it, this class will all be over. Unbelievable how time flies. Go ahead and lift uh, your right leg up. This time you're going to open the hip, which means bend your right knee and start to peel the hip open. You want to keep that left hip pushing underneath. That's it. And then go ahead and bring the right knee under your body to your left elbow, like you're twisting. Good. Just let it cook there for a breath. Nice. Lift your right leg back again as you breathe in. This time go to the other arm, the right elbow on your exhale. Maybe touch the elbow. Good. Lift your right leg back on your inhale. And then knee to nose. Step right between your hands this time. Go ahead and grab your block and place it on its highest height on the outside of your right foot. And then as you spin your back foot flat, reach your left arm up. So your right hand's on the block, right on the outside of your foot. You want to push the knee into your right arm a bit. And then use that as an anchor to open your left chest a bit more. Good. And then stretch your left arm over your left ear, palm facing down. And get a nice long stretch through your left arm. Good. Now you feel this block on your right hand. You're welcome to take the next option or skip it. Pick your block up off the ground. Squeeze it between your palms. Good. And try not to make that look on your face while you do it. Good. Now, if you're holding the block, go ahead and set it back down where it came from. Warrior two, everybody press up to warrior two. Turn your right palm up, reverse warrior. As you reach your right arm up and back, slide your left hand down your leg. Very nice. And then come back to warrior two. Go ahead and take your left hand behind your back. Right? See if you can tuck it away to the inner right thigh. You might even use your right hand to pull it in there. Good. Now, option one, set your right hand back on your block. Option two, you're going to take a full bind by going on the inside of your right leg with your right hand and reaching underneath for your left wrist. Either way is good. Look at that left hand behind your back. So again, another chest opener. You feel the energy rising. Good. Nice. Now try not to lose me here. Keep your left hand behind your back. Reach your right arm forward to the front of the room, palm facing up. Try to get that bicep a little closer to your ear. And then reverse half-bound warrior. Sweep it all the way back. Straighten both legs while you're here. Okay, so you get a little more extension. Good. And this should lead us into triangle pose. All right. So lean forward. Start to reach as far as you can in front of you to the green wall. 
and then float your right hand down. You could use your block if you want, or you could grab your leg as if it was a block. And then use that left arm to open your chest. And at this point, do what you want with your left arm. If you want to reach it up, go for it. If you want to keep it behind your back, by all means. Good. Check your breath. Hmm. Uh, now take a moment to look down in front of your toes. You're going to bend the right knee and go slow. Walk your right hand forward a foot or so. You can take that block with you if you want a more advanced variation and lift your back leg up. We call it half moon pose. Yes. So as you lift your back leg off the ground, see so if you can keep that same alignment so your hips will stack. And, and yeah, usually when you're new, you're just trying not to fall. But if you do, that might be exactly what you need to learn. If you want a little more activity, reach your left arm to the front of the room, palm facing down. And if you want one more step deeper, pick that block up off the ground, squeeze it between your palms as you reach forward. And wherever you are, you're in the perfect place. Just breathe into that space. Let go of any ideas for perfection. Really nice. Last three. Good. In two. All we're going to do in one is set both hands down on the ground. Nice job. So now you're in a sweet standing splits. Walk your hands closer to your toes. You might grab the back of your leg if you want. If it feels good. Yeah, you can just flirt with lifting the left leg higher. It doesn't really have to move to feel sweet. That's it. Give me one more deep breath and then set your left foot next to your right foot and come into chair pose. Bend the knees, sink your hips down, reach your arms up. Good. Bring the hands to your heart, twist to the right side and hook your left elbow on the outer right hip or thigh. Remember how I asked you to lift your left heel off the ground? Try to do that here. And again, if it's no biggie, you could lift the whole foot off the ground. Just know it's an option. Good. And then can you keep your right leg doing what it's doing, but start to extend your left leg back? Eventually, you're going to drop step your left foot on the back edge of your mat. And if you need to, you can set the knee down. And if you need to, you can adjust that left foot any which way. You know, you don't have to live with where the foot landed. Like if you put your shirt on backwards this morning, I'm pretty sure you turned it around. And the last three or four breaths, just breathe deep and turn and twist like a massage. Good. And just give it one more inhale to turn. And then plank position, hands to the ground. Step your right foot back. Bring your feet together. Roll onto the outer edge of your left foot and reach your right arm up. Yeah, some of you guys might want to consider setting your left knee down on the floor, making life a little more simple. Otherwise, take your right arm, reach it over your ear front of the room. Imagine your right hand was pushing into the side of a block. Maybe one day you'll reach your left arm out as well. That's it. Right arm up. Big inhale. Set your right hand down on your exhale. Good. Lower your right forearm down to the ground. And then roll onto the outer edge of your right foot. Try to do the same thing on the other side. And the best modification for this one is to skip it. All right? Reach your left arm over your ear. Palm facing down just for three. Good. Two. Yes, and in one, just circle that left forearm down too. Walk your feet in about halfway to your elbows. You're in a dolphin pose, which is down dog on your elbows. This is what down dog would feel like if you had tiny, short little arms. And then you want to push your hips back. Yeah, so feel the strength of your arms really nice. If you feel pretty good here, lift your right leg up. And, and then switch. If you lifted your right leg, try your left side. And then set your left foot down. You have five breaths to rest either in child's pose or to hold this pose. Up to you. Hmm. Wherever you are, just make sure you still have that nice quality behind your breathing. That unattachment to the pose. And just that sweet mentality, that kind energy. Good. And all of a sudden, we only have one last standing side to go. All right, so let's start it from downward facing dog. Here we go. Just like last time, lift your left leg this time. Bend your left knee, open up your hip, keeping the right hip firming underneath you. 
And then, and then left knee to your right elbow underneath and across like a twist. Just kind of let it marinate for a moment. That's it. And then lift your left leg back on your inhale. And then left knee to your left arm on your exhale. Just let it hover. Yes. Inhale, lift your left leg high. And then knee to nose, hit that bullseye. Step right between your hands. Grab your block. Place it on the outside of your left foot, highest height. Spin your right heel flat. Once you're ready, reach your right arm up. So this is the traditional Parsvokanasana, right? So you want to push the knee into the arm. And then isolating your right arm, reach it to the front of the room, palm facing down. Good. You're going to feel that ball and socket joint of your shoulder. as you kind of roll the pinky down just a touch. Good. Yeah, some of you are begging for more. Go ahead and pick up your block if you want more. Squeeze it between your two palms, but try not to bend the elbows. Mm-hmm. Nice. Good. And then you're here for just three. Nice, strong legs here, too. If you have that block in your hands in one, just set it down first and then come into warrior two. Press all the way up. Turn your left palm up once you're here. Reverse warrior. Sweep it up and back. Slide your right hand down your leg. And then come back to warrior two. Slip the right hand behind your back. Maybe you'll touch the inner thigh or pull it in there. Right? And then turn your, uh, place your left hand either on the block, option one, or option two, full bind. You'll reach underneath your left leg for your right fingers or right wrist. We're only here for a few breaths, so feel the energy rising up. If gravity wasn't an obstacle, your body would float up to the ceiling here. That's where the energy is going. Good. Now keep your right hand behind you. Reach your left arm forward, palm facing up. So get that bicep a little closer to your ear. And then come all the way back. So you straighten both legs. It's like a half-bound reverse triangle pose. Which is a great segue into triangle. And keep that right hand behind you as you lean forward and reach as far as you can in front of your toes. And either place your hand on your block or grab your leg. And at this point, whatever that right arm wants to do, let it. You could reach it up. You could flip the bird. You could keep it behind you or your back. Whatever feels right. Good. Mm. Good. All right. Now take your time. Look down in front of your toes for the transition. Bend your left knee. Crawl your left hand forward a foot or so and elevate your right leg up and off the ground. You can even use that block if it helps you. And yeah, a lot of this just has to do with stability, right? So you want to feel the strength of your left leg. You want to balance from your right leg. If you want a little bit more, reach the right arm to the front of the room. And then maybe if you have that block, you could reach it forward as well. You don't even have to have a block to do this stuff. Sometimes it's nice to have that aesthetic, tangible object. That's it, you guys. Last three. And in two. All we're going to do in one is set the block of the hands on the ground. Square your hips. Right hip level with your left. Your right leg's still up. Just drop your heavy head. Let it hang. And walk your hands a little closer to your toes. Nice, you guys. Last deep inhale here, and then release your right foot next to your left. Come right into chair pose, down the home stretch. Bend the knees, sink down, reach up. Place the hands at your heart, twist to the left. Hook your right elbow outside of your left knee, left thigh. Turn a little bit and breathe a lot. So this time it'll be the left heel that stays down, and be the right heel that lifts up, maybe the whole foot if you want a little bit more. It's counterbalancing, it's physics. It only happens with practice. Balance. Start to extend your right leg back. Eventually, let your right foot drop onto the floor at the back edge of your mat. Yeah. And then give yourself a moment to fidget around. Find the pose. Good. And then lengthen the spine as you breathe into it. Last three. Good. Two. So nice, you guys. Last one here. Let's meet in plank, hands to the ground, step your foot back, bring your feet together, roll onto the outer edge of your left foot, and reach your right arm to the sky, side plank. You're almost there. Good. And then take your right arm, reach it to the front of the room, really sharpen the arm, maybe get that bicep a bit closer to your head. 
Good, and then we'll circle the right hand to the ground and lower the right elbow down, All right? So right forearm's down, roll onto the outer edge of your right foot, float your left arm up. Yeah, and if you can smile through this, you guys are advanced, right? Take your left arm to the front of the room, last three. Steady breath, steady mind for two. Good, last one here, place both forearms down, last strong, 20 seconds to go. And if you can hover your right foot a millimeter off the ground, go for it. Good. And then if you did that, switch it up. Right foot down, left foot lifts, last 10 seconds. Good. Set your left foot down and gently lie all the way down onto your belly. Nice job, you guys. So right away, we're going to bend the knees, reach back with the hands, catch the outer ankles with the hands. It's the last active pose of the class. Kick the feet into the hands and open up your chest, your heart, your lungs, lift your head, strong legs here. Big chest opener. Mm. Good. Last three. Beautiful. Two. If you have anything left, go for it, last one, and then let it go, child's pose. Push the hips on your heels, soften your forehead down onto the ground. Hmm. And really nice, you guys. Go to rock up to the hands and the knees. We're gonna have a seat. Cross the ankles behind you and have a seat. And just cross the legs in front of you. If you'd like a deeper hip opener than this, then go for a double seated pigeon. This is a nice one though in a shorter class. Just crawl the hands out in front of you. And let your head drop. Let your breath do the work. Start to feel your nervous system being soothed by the sound of your breathing. And walk your hands back. Simply uncross and recross the other way. I feel a little bit different on this side. And the same thing. Walk the hands out in front of you any amount. Just feel a nice release in your lower back, your hips, your head. And then take a moment to come all the way back up. And then end with a symmetrical pose. You can straighten the legs out in front. You can separate them a little bit as well. If you want to go really wide with your legs, that's fine too. And then walk the hands out in front of you or grab your feet. Hmm. Let's take a few deep breaths here and let everything unravel. Let the tension of the mind dissolve a bit. It's all meet in Shavasana when you're ready. It's the next few breaths. Take your time. Hmm. Just set up for comfort. Set up to relax. And eventually you want to close the eyes or cover them with something. And 
very much like we did to start this practice. I want to let go of just one breath and let's let go of the sound of awe when we do it. Let's take a huge inhale through your nose. Hold your breath for three. We're going to ride the whole exhale out. Two, one. Shavasana.